All right, so uh, looks like today, just now, I got my um, Dr. DAC DX2 Muses, which is a uh, pretty well-regarded DAC and uh, amp combo, shipped all the way from Korea. So, I figured if we're going to have something all the way from Korea, we better unbox it and see what we can see. All right. See if I can do this with one hand and not make a complete mess. Kind of hope I don't have to return it in case it doesn't work, considering it's from freaking Korea. Although I have to admit, it only took about uh, three or four days to get here, which isn't too bad, considering I live in the U.S. Eastern U.S. So I think it came in from New York. Anyway, this is a pretty uh, well. This is a, sort of an obscure DAC amp combo, but it's uh, well regarded by people that have tried it. It has most of the features that I'm looking for, and unlike a lot of the, it, it's 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 reasonably priced. It's only three hundred dollars. That actually included shipping, which I was kind of surprised about. It's a uh, but. Unlike a lot of the cheaper DACs, like the Woo DACs or the GD, Audio GD or whatever, or anything like those, this one measured well, or even the, the New Force things, which I have a New Force UDAC 2 right now, and I want to upgrade that. Even the UDAC things, all those, sometimes they don't measure too well statistically when you run them through uh, tools that measure how accurately they do what they say they do, right? Like, you know... What's the distortion? What's the frequency response? Is there anything like that? Now, I realize that people make the point that you can't tell how something's going to sound by just looking at numbers, and that's true. And if it sounds good to you, it does sound good to you, but to me, I want to know that what I'm paying for is doing what I think it's doing, and I want to know if it isn't so I can you know, plan accordingly. I don't like having. I don't like buying things without proper stats. I mean, this guy that they had stats for everything. It's been tested with RMAA repeatedly. It does what it says it does. It has a zero ohm output impedance on the headphone jack, which is makes it actually usable for a lot of things. So you're not going to have uh, damping issues with certain phones. It's going to be very compatible. The frequency response is normal. The noise level is very good. The distortion is you know, where it needs to be, there's nothing, fun. there's no there's no bumps in the frequency range, you know, to color the sound. It, it's where it needs to be, right? It does what it says it does. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, I'm a believer that if you want to alter the source material, you either get an amp that does that, or you get a pair of headphones to do that. Preferably the headphones, really. The amp and the DAC should be more or less neutral, in my opinion. The idea with the amp primarily is that you want to make sure that the amp will work well with the phones that you have. The DAC pretty much should just do what it should do. Uh, the only thing I don't think this one does is it does not have a fixed line out for the DAC. So you you can use it as a standalone DAC, but the line out isn't fixed, which is not ideal, but again, it's better than what I had before. All right, so... I think this one is made in Korea. I'm not sure. Audio track. Uh, who, they also make sound cards, but I forget the name of the sound cards they make. They make they're, they're, it's the same company that makes some relatively well recorded sound cards and stuff like that. I forget the name, of them, but you've probably heard of them if you know anything about sound cards. Okay, so yeah, this one is actually AC powered, so we don't have to worry about you know, the power, the line level out, or the dirty power from the USB as much. Got phono connections, which I probably won't need. And this is the DAC. Not the most, uh, not the 
not the sexiest looking thing I've ever seen. I knew that going in. It's uh, it's pretty much it looks like piece of audio equipment. It's not like the fancy like the um, Asgard or one of the other amps where it's you know all this you know machined aluminum and you know minimalist style. But it's uh, it's affordable and it does what I want and it does what it says it does when the metal hits the road and we or the rubber hits the road and we look at the numbers you know no surprises in the numbers that's probably number one i mean you can buy you can buy a bunch of you know really good dacs that people like that sound great and amps and all that stuff um from my places but people don't run tests on them and sometimes when people do we find out that oh uh, mm, it's got some weird uh some weird uh, harmonics or weird anomalies or you know the the distortion is off, or something weird like that. Uh, you know, because a lot of these people, they don't, they design their amps based on how, based on sound. You know, they tweak it until it sounds good, but they don't necessarily look at all the statistics and specs to make sure that what they're providing is what they need to provide. And again, I'm not against tweaking an amp or anything until it sounds right, but. You know, if, if your noise floor is terrible, or you won't tell me what your uh, the output impedance of your headphone jack is, and you won't, you know, your signal to noise ratio is completely terrible. Your total harmonic distortion isn't where it needs to be. Then, you know, I mean, I, that's something I want to know. I'm not saying that it's bad. I just I want to know that before I go in. You know, I'm gonna spend enough money on this stuff. Want to make sure I'm not buying something that's thrown together in a garage somewhere and doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do. Okay, so here's the audio track. Looks like we've got a um, power button here. We have two headphone jacks, a uh, quarter inch. Um, I believe one is a higher impedance than the other. Something like that. You can switch the... This is a digital. Let me see if I can... No. This is a digital uh, input switch that lets you choose between uh, optical or USB. And this is the source. You can use this as a straight amp if you um, run the audio in through the line in. You know, analog, you can use it as a straight up amp. So this lets you choose between analog in or digital in. Um, and then output via the line outs on the back or the headphone jacks. I'm assuming you can drive two sets of headphones at once, but I don't. I won't be using it like that. And then we got the volume pot here, which is uh, pretty much just a volume pot. Feels fine though, not wiggly or anything like that. Also, we have a row of lights here for the DAC part, which uh, light up tell you the um, the. Um, I'm sorry, I have a blank here. Tell you the uh, the format of your input source, whether it's you know 44.1 sampling rate, 48, 88.2, 96, 176, 192, and this does go all the way to 192. So 24-bit uh, 192. So that is that is pretty good. I don't actually have any uh, music files that are 192, 24, but and I don't anticipate getting any. But you know why not? Okay, so on the back, yeah, we got the line out, so we got the line in, we got the DC, DC in, optical out, USB, optical in. So, I, yeah, I guess since it does have an optical out, you can, and a coax. It looks like you can uh, use this as a SPDF or SPDIF or an optical pass through, right? So, if you wanted to go from USB to optical, you can use this as a conversion stage for that. Okay, so, no, there's the cat. She's not impressed. Um, all right, so I'm going to go plug this thing up and uh, see how it works. There we go, the Dr. Dactu DX Muses from AudioTrack.